Welcome and thank you for joining us today for Perfecting Kingdom Living, where you'll hear the word you need to live a prosperous kingdom lifestyle here on earth. Now, Damaris Johnson. Hello and welcome to another edition of Perfecting Kingdom Living. I am Damaris Johnson and we are here to give you the word of God. I'm joined today by my dear brother, as always, Brother Allen. And I'm also joined by a son of mine, a dear brother as well. Brother Demar, who is the leader of our worship at the Worship Center, uh, and he has been a blessing to our ministry. He's been a blessing to me personally, uh, and he is here today to talk to you about, uh, we're going to talk about two things today. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to conclude uh, our ministry as we've been dealing with prayer and, and the power of prayer and the different aspects of prayer, but we want to introduce a new uh, message that I really believe is essential to the life of the believer and to anybody's life uh, as far as that is concerned as it deals with the grace of God. I know that's a term that's thrown around religious circles uh, so often, but we never really understand the depth of what the grace of God means. A lot of us define it as the unmerited favor of God, and it is that, but it is so much more than that. It is so much more than that. We're gonna define it for you today. We're gonna give you some insights and in how, how it works uh, from an operational standpoint, functionally. Um, and so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into those things uh, as, as we continue in the show. But first, we want to pick up from where we left off, brother, dealing with prayer. Uh, if you could turn to Matthew's Gospel, the sixth chapter, um, we, we left off there. And we've talked about so many things, so many things that are critical uh, to, your, to your faith life about what prayer is. Uh, what I think is one of the most important things is understanding that prayer is not an opportunity for you to get your will done. But it is the opportunity for the church to join forces with God Almighty and to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. It's for us to join our wills together with God's will and say, thus saith the Lord, this is the will of God. This is how it's going to be. This is what's going to be in my life, in my family's life, in my community. It's an opportunity for you to join forces with God Almighty and see his will be done. Jesus echoed. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. That's the essence of prayer. If you're praying, with that in mind, you will have an effectual and a fervent prayer life. And, brother, I think it's important for them to, uh, to understand that, that prayer is not a matter of them getting their will done, but a matter of God getting his will done. Right. Prayer is the essence of, of a life of faith that we've called to live. It's the channel by which faith is manifested, mm -hmm. and God is glorified by faith being manifested. See, there's obstacles in the way of you believing God, things that you see, things that you hear, things that you go through. But prayer is what helps you build up the faith to believe God through them obstacles that are confronting you. Like that is, that. if you're praying the word. Right, I like that. I like that. So prayer, so, so once we begin to pray the word, prayer is the, is the means by which we gather, we gain the strength, we build right, the right, faith. Right, right. See, um, I remember you reading yesterday at, 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 the, um, at the worship, at the, at the worship that you were talking about, um, in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, mm. where Paul was saying, um, thrice, three times, he besought the Lord mm. to remove this thing that was hindering and bothering him. Mm. But the Lord answered him and said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. See, the weak areas of our life and the channel through the power of God is weakness. Right. That's the channel that gets, but it, it has to come through prayer. But brother, that, wait, 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 wait. That's 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 a powerful thought right there. I I I want to save that, right. but I want to deal with it right. the, because it's connected to prayer. The channel, the channel that connects our prayer to the grace of God, is us being willing to accept in weakness. Right. We we're weak. We're right. weak. Right. Otherwise, we can't do it. Right. It can't be done by us alone. So that's where the word of God comes in. So you have to pray the word. As you pray the word, the word's not going to fail. You have to pray it out, though. Right. There's challenges. There are things that come to hinder that word from coming forth from your spirit. Right. You are an overcomer. He's called you to be an overcomer. That's why when he saved you, he didn't take you up to glory. He saved you. Then he brought you into a place where you have to, a position where you have to overcome obstacles to end your life. Mm. It might be people. It might be situations. It might be the job. It might be any number of factors. But you're an overcomer. Mm. But if you're praying the word, whatever it is you have to overcome, it is overcome. In that weakest moment where I can't do it, fine. Mm. That's where he wants you, where you can't do it. That's why he put it there. Now you put yeah. the word on it, 
and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Praise so it's God. not a matter of what, whether you can do it or not, but whether or not you're going to believe God to join forces with him so it'll get done. And you join forces with him through prayer. Amen. Now, Brother DeMar, he, I mean, I kind of snatched him off the football field and, 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 and threw him right into a position of, of, of worship. I mean, uh, the gift was there, uh, obviously. Uh, grew, up, grew up in a family that was very musically inclined, but um, kind of stifled his gift a little bit, kind of was discouraged from, from pursuing it. But once, once he really gave his heart to the Lord, he really began to, to, uh, to give himself over to, to, to the gift that God has given him. And then I just threw him right in the fire. I just threw him right in the fire. And it was prayer that helped you. Right to deal with that. I'll never forget the first night we were worshiping. <laughs> we just said, go with it. Whatever, where, where we are is where we are. How has prayer helped you to develop the gift and, and function as worship? Well, initially, uh, I remember when I first joined you two brothers praying, we spread the Salvation Army a few years right. ago. And I can remember the first time, um, I never heard, I don't wanna say, well, anyone really praying as fervently. So right. I, I wasn't at that level yet. <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. I would really just listen and I couldn't do nothing but sing, you know, and the more I heard y'all praying, I would, um, I could hear y'all praying scriptures, which is what we emphasize a lot. Mm -hmm. And as I began to uh, pray, I would pray scriptures as well. I'll just take the, I remember you mentioned that, you know, just read, the, read right, it right. verbatim. Right. So I would do that, and the more I did it, even songs would just come up from there, and mm -hmm. I just would hear it, and then it would just begin to flow out even in that way, too. Praise God. I mean, and, and, but that's important, though. Boy, I mean, I mean, we, we, we over-spiritualize prayer a lot of times right. we over spiritualize a lot of things but when we're talking about praying and 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 the application of prayer and how to function in prayer something that simple i mean i did the same thing same thing he did when we started praying together man i was i, I just listened for the first i don't know how long he did the same thing then he caught the spirit of it right. he caught the spirit of it and then now he was able to join in prayer and it eventually came out to uh, aid him and give him the strength he needed to become the effective worship leader that god has called him to become but he says something that I think is key. He would read the scripture. Right. He would read this. I mean, Bible open. I started just reading the scripture and, and, and right. quoting the Bible, quoting the scripture. And, and you know, I would, I would formalize it in a way that it would, it would come out as a prayer. Right. But it, it was just right from the Bible. And from there, you're, you're on your way. Right. Let me say this. A lot of times when people think of prayer, they think it sometimes a conception of it might be just a request being made. But when Jesus said, after this manner, pray ye. It goes through different avenues. It goes through praise, it goes through worship, it goes through thanksgiving, it goes through petition, it goes through intercession, it goes through repentance. There's different avenues of praying. So you must understand that when you're talking about praying, it's not just asking for something to be done, but worshiping and giving glory to God. Matter of fact, we said after this manner when you pray, the first thing you need to do is to thank God and give glory to him and to worship him. Now talk right. about why that's important. And with, with DeMar being a worship leader, we'll get his comment on it as well. Well, why, why is that important? Why does, why does in, in Matthew's Gospel, the sixth chapter, why does Jesus start off his prayer track, so to speak, right. with, with worshiping and praising his name? Well, in order to have something, you have to get something. In order to get something, you got to get, you got to get from God. So you have to give God back that which he has given you. Right. He's given you his word. As you put that word in your spirit and release it back to him, you begin to bless his name. The only thing you can bless God is great enough to bless God is God himself. So God gives you of his own. He puts his love in you. He puts his spirit in you. He puts his word in you. He puts the spirit of his son in you. You put that word in the spirit. And as it feeds and it manifests the glory of God, it enables God now, as you give to him, he's able to give to you. As you draw nigh to God, he's able to draw back and get from God what you need in your life. He deposits his, uh, um, sections of inspiration in your spirit that enable you to know what to do in any situation in life. Now, DeMar, from, from, a, from a worship leader standpoint, when you see that the first aspect of prayer is praise and worship, how do you respond to that? Well, uh, even uh, how we talk about the seven dimensions of the seven words, Hebrew words for praise. The first word, uh, Toda, is a conscious decision in the mind to solely focus on Father. And, okay, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm going to, even without music, I'm going to give you glory right here, right now. And that's something I take into the worship, okay. Everything else is secondary right now. I'm coming to give you praise right now and glorify your name. I like what you just said. You said, without music. Right. A lot of us, we relegate praise in that time of praise 
to music unless we're unless we're unless we're in a service and there's this music playing. We we don't feel like we can praise God, but how does how does it work for one to, to do it without music? <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it really is. A, it sounds like a song to me. I mean, you know, especially as we lifting up our voices. Um, you know, some folk, you know, some brothers, man, they just be, you know, <laughs> hollering. You know what I'm saying? You know, but at the same time, it without music. I remember you said something key that I took with me for a while um, that you have to be careful not to worship for the people. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be worshiping for them and they're watching you and in essence you're performing. Mm -hmm. But instead, worship God. And if they worship, they worship. Praise if they God. don't, they don't. If they don't, you know, they don't. Praise God. And they what? catch the spirit, like you said, catching the spirit of it. Well, and, and, and that's key, especially as it relates to prayer. Uh, when, you, when you go through that track, brother, and it says, hallowed be thy name. First right. thing we got to do is we got to praise him, we got to magnify his name. Right. Hallowed be that. Until you really hollow his name. Amen. Until you really position and put him in that position where you exalt his name. Right. The kingdom can't really be received. Amen. His kingdom can't really be, really be received. So talk about the transition from hollowing his name and receiving the authority and the order of his kingdom. Right. Well, we know that the kingdom is put in this earth to bring back order to the earth. We have a, a earth, a world that's in disorder disruption but the kingdom of God is invading us and it invades us through the believers the effectual vibrant prayer of righteous people crying out to God to put things back in its proper place as we begin to hollow his name as we begin to worship God as we begin to communicate with him he deposits in us what we need to know what to do to bring things in the proper way. He'll give you a word. Mm -hmm. It might be a word for another brother. It might be a word of healing. Right. It might be a word for the situation, whatever you're going through in life. Uh, and it'll give you a word that is, enables you to bring forth the order of the kingdom in the earth right now. That kingdom come, that will be done. But without, like you said, without hollowing the name, without praising God or worship him, that got to come first. Right. See, in the order of your prayer, there's a certain order that has to follow. You have to do one thing after another in order to get to that position. You just can't start crying out and asking God for X, Y, right, Z. Right. But first acknowledge him, number one. The first thing has to be satisfied is the heart of God mm -hmm. before anything happens on earth. Just like when God gave, the, the blood was given. He said, when I see the blood, then after I see the blood, I'm able to do for the people what needs to be done, deliver them out of their bondage. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with us. We first give to God, then God's able to give back to us. Mm -hmm. But his heart, his heart is satisfied first. Now, Demar, that's important for you, uh, not just in your time of worship, but in your own private time. Right. To hallow his name and to enter into that time of receiving the right. order of the kingdom. Uh, countless times as I'm just worshiping and, you know, just magnifying his name, initially, songs just come. I don't, mm -hmm. they don't have, you don't have to think about it, you know, mm -hmm. or even a as you know, someone that I might eventually pray for in that prayer, something to come, a word of knowledge might come, or something might come for them initially right there as you're just magnifying his name, mm -hmm. you know, not even having to think of it, you know. And that's important because as you walk by faith, you need to hear words to right. lead you and guide you. Right. You, need to hear, you need to be able to receive the grace. We'll use the term grace, which represents God's wisdom, God's strength, God's power. That's something that we, we're going to be able to deal with uh, on the, in the second half of the show, but not relegating the grace of God. Everything that you just mentioned, receiving a word, receiving a wisdom, receiving a power, can be summarized or is summarized by the Bible in the word grace. And right. we need to understand that. That's why the declaration to Paul from Jesus was, my grace is sufficient for thee, is a powerful, powerful declaration. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. And then when we get back, we're going to deal with that aspect and transition from this, from this powerful time that we've been dealing with prayer over into what prayer should lead us into, a life of grace that helps us to overcome the challenges we face. We'll be right back right after this. Hey, I pray that the first part of that message has been a blessing to you because I'm sure it blessed my life and I hope that it blessed your life. But listen, it's one thing for you to receive this word via television, uh, via the radio, but, but, but it's a whole nother thing for you to experience the presence of God in a service. And I want to just take this time to invite you to come out and be a part of our worship experience. We like to call it an experience because we come for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to experience the presence of God. We have a service that goes on every 
every Friday night that I know with all my heart that is going to be a blessing to the region. It's not a church thing. It's not a local thing, but it's, it's something for the entire region. We come to lift up the name of our God. We come to worship with all of our might and all of our strength. And whatever happens, happens. Whatever the Spirit of God desires to do in that service, we allow him to do it. So I want to invite you to come on Friday nights. Prayer begins at 6 o'clock and the service begins promptly at 7. I guarantee you, you will be blessed. Now, let's get back to some more of that word. Welcome back. I pray that, that you take heed to the message because I really believe it's important for you to be in the service. And we would love for you to come to the worship center. Um, I gave you the address and things of that nature on the screen. If you have any questions, go to our website. Send me an email. The email address will come across the screen. Let me know. Let us know what it is that you need. We want to pray for you. We want to believe God with you. We also want to see you in the service. We believe it's important for you to be in the service on Sunday nights, on Tuesday nights, on Friday, Friday nights. Just be in the presence of God with the congregation of the righteous. Also, if you want to view these broadcasts whenever you feel like it, you may get home at 2 o'clock in the morning and you, you feel like you need to hear a word, you can go to the Apollo Media Center website. And you, can, and you can log on there and you can see these broadcasts whenever you feel like it. You may have a friend who needs to hear this word as it pertains to prayer and the essence of what the grace of God is all about. You can go to the Apollo Media Center website and view these broadcasts at any time via the website or via the uh, World Wide Web so that your life can be blessed. Now, fellas, we were talking about prayer and we were transitioning from the importance of praying in accordance to the order that right. Jesus gave us. It's not Prayer is relegated by 99% of the Christendom to request, right? when that's really just a small portion of what, of what prayer is all about. Jesus gave us the totality, and he touched on so many different aspects of what our prayer ministry, and right. I want to use that word ministry and emphasize the word ministry. Prayer is the ministry that every believer is called to. Right. Prayer ministry should follow that particular track, that particular order. Right. I know we were just at a football game, and, 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 the, and the football team gathered themselves together, and they prayed. And pray and what they prayed, they prayed that prayer, but they prayed it as if that was the end of the prayer. They didn't get into the depth of the meat of that prayer. That prayer is so much deeper than what most realize. It is an order or a track that Jesus left us so that we may commune with Father and enter into the grace zone, I like to call it, the grace zone where we receive the strength, we receive whatever it is you need, you receive it from Father. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and I want to read a, a passage of scripture. Um, that, I, that I want us to launch from, and this will lead us into many other aspects of what the grace of God is all about. Um, 2 Corinthians 12 chapter says this. It says, uh, this was Paul um, as he was uh, in, in a situation where he had to, you know, defend his ministry, defend his person, his character, uh, his authority, his apostleship. And one of the things he went to was visions and revelations. And, 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 and out of that came this particular passage of Scripture. Um, let's go to verse... Six, it says, For though I would desire the glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me, he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. Now, there, should, there, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than the that the power, that the power, the dunamis, the power of Christ, of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. That's a powerful verse of scripture. And it all centers around the one point where Paul was crying out. The thought came to me today, brother. It, it was as if Paul was saying, Lord, if you would take this thing away from me, I can do more. Right. I can go further. Right. I can run faster. Right. I can sing. If you just eliminate this out of my life. But that's not God's way. Right. That's not the way of grace. Right. Grace embraces the necessities. It embraces the persecution and it overcomes it. Right. That's why we're overcomers. Right. The Bible says this. By faith, we have access into this grace where we stand. The faith to generate the, 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 the power that overcome any obstacle in our life, we can draw from the grace of God by faith. And faith is putting God's word in your spirit. That's why when you pray, you have to pray the word. If you pray the word, whatever you need out there, his grace is sufficient. It's bigger than anything you can imagine, anything above anything you can ask or think. His grace is sufficient. 
but we draw it by faith. And faith is, is, is energized by prayer. Mm -hmm. You pray to get faith, as I say so many times. Faith will work without prayer, but prayer won't work without faith. Mm -hmm. So the purpose Wait, of, wait, wait. Let's say that again. Faith will work, work without, without prayer, prayer but, but prayer, prayer won't, won't work, work without, without faith. faith. See, the reason why you pray is that your faith might come alive. Mm. It might be energized. It might be strengthened to get the job done. You might believe God to be able to get the job done. Amen. If you already believe, you don't need to pray about it. Right. See what I'm saying? Right. You can praise God and rejoice in it. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. But you pray for that, for that purpose. And what you need to pray is the word. Pray the word because the word never fails. It cannot return into void. The word of God is the food that the spirit man feeds on. Mm. He don't feed on nothing else. He can't feed on the movies or the TV programs or the ball games. He feeds on the word of God. That's what he wants, and that's Amen. what strengthens him. Amen. You know, and so if, you, if you're feeding on something else, the, something else will get into your prayer. And that's why a lot of prayers ain't, ain't heard. Right. And people get, get word, and the word ain't right because they've been feeding on something else. All that's integrated into your system. It, the word of God is pure, of a pure word. If you pray nothing but word, you'll get nothing but good results. Amen. Now, now the reason I like uh, 2 Corinthians 12 chapter, it brings out the thought that wherever I am, no matter how strong I am, no matter how weak I am, no matter how full I am, wherever I am, right where I am, the grace of God will pick up and supply that which is lacking. When that scripture brings out my grace is sufficient, it takes us beyond the unmerited favor aspect of what grace is about. Right. It takes us into the depth of what the grace of God really capsulizes as it pertains to receiving from God. Right. That's a word that, that the Lord has given us to really embrace everything you need right. is, is I have. Right. That's what grace is about. Right. It's the empowerment to live the life God has called you to live. That's Amen. what grace is. The empowerment from God, whatever it is, and his name covers it all, you know. God empowers you to live that life, but it's through the faith of God that you receive this. Amen. So you have to pray that the faith, you know, faith might be, the Bible says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. As you pray in the Spirit, as you pray to understand it, that faith is energized, you're able to believe God, and it gets bigger and bigger. Your faith grows exceedingly, and it empowers you to live the life that God has you to live. Now, um, Damar is a perfect example of really living and feeding off the grace of God, having no formal training musically, um, having no one ever really uh, take him under his wing and teach him music. I put him on the keyboard, and he just started playing. Right. And from there, bro, you had no choice <laughs> but to lean upon the grace of God, because I right. threw him in the fire, and we said, that's it, we ain't turning back. <laughs> how, how did you make that transition? Uh, through prayer. <laughs> Uh, definitely a connection. Uh, I want to turn to the scripture, though, that really uh, dealing with grace uh, in Titus chapter 2, uh, verse 11. This is a scripture I came across in regards to grace. Even in that whole, tra in that whole time of transitioning from, uh, you know, not being sure of what I was doing with my life until the Lord speaking a word and you confirming it, and then this is what was going on. Um, it says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Showing that grace is the teacher. Grace is what the brother said empowers us to go beyond our natural abilities. Anything we could think of or, or think that we're not, you know, his grace kicks in. And it's an overpowering force, you know, like you said, going beyond the depth of unmerited favor. Well, and, and see, we define grace as the divine influence of the, of the uh, charisma or the character or the nature of God on the heart of man, which impacts him, which empowers him, which enables him to be and to do what it is the Word of God says he can be and that he can do. That's how we define the grace of God. It is the divine influence upon the heart of man. It is that God influence, the nature, the character, the wisdom, the love, the faith, whatever it is that, that, that depicts God, that, that influences the heart of man. It empowers us. It enables us. It equips us. It gives us everything we need in order. It, it gives Demar, who lacks the formal training, who lacks the, uh, uh, the, the wisdom of the world when it comes to music, but the grace of God kicks in 
and where he's lacking can produce some of the most beautiful worship songs, can produce some of the most beautiful love songs, can produce some of the most beautiful praise and worship songs because he's wholly depending upon grace. Brother, one of your favorite scriptures, one of your favorite scriptures that you love to quote, and I want you to quote it right now, is that Father doesn't choose the most astute. He don't choose those who are esteemed in the wisdom, but who does he choose? The weak, the despised. Yes. The, 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 the rejected. Mm -hmm. That's in um, the first, what's that, first Corinthians, mm -hmm. the first chapter, starting about, I think about 24. Not many mighty. Not right. many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the weak things in the world to despise, the, the, the confound the things that are mighty. Right. And the base thing to confound the things that are, uh, misquoting the script. Yeah, I can't well, get it. I, I, <laughs> That's why I, I wanted you to do it. Know, <laughs> right, right. But um, it's been a while since I, I quoted yeah. that scripture. But, but God chooses these things, the weak things and element. Uh, here it goes. It says, "Is it for you see your calling, brethren, that how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise." And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, it says yea, and the things which are not mm. to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh might glory in his presence. The yeah. things that are not. And, and, and going back to uh, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God takes the weak and the despised and rejected things, and he gets glory out of that. Because what you realize, you, you can't do it, you're rejected, you're weak, you're unable to do it, then you're a candidate for the glory of God to come upon you. Amen. His grace is, a, is, 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 is made perfect in weakness, not in our strength, right. in our weakness. Right. We want to go forth, but it ain't about us. And, it's a, and a lot of times, brother, we need to have infirmities, we need to right. have persecutions, we need to have these things in our life to, right. to show us right. our weaknesses. Right. right, because the weakness is the channel for the glory of God being released in your life. We got about two minutes, uh, Demar. Um, when you when you uh, was thrust into this position of worship, and and I'm and I'm sure it, it, it overwhelms you some. How did you go before Father to express that the need to fulfill that calling? Well, um, even Brother was speaking of, uh, through faith. Um, I had a word in my spirit. The Lord has spoke a word to me. You're a singer for me, and I said, Well, what does that mean? <laughs> I had no idea. Mm -hmm. A couple of days later, you asked me about leading worship. I'm like, Hold on. I know what you're talking about, playing piano and <laughs> right. all that. I don't know how to do, do it all. <laughs> I pay for piano, I pay for singing yeah. lessons, all that. All right, yeah. praise God, you know. Yeah. But um, the just solely depending on that grace, you know. And another thing is when it started to come to pass and started happening, I started picking up and songs is coming, it just makes you realize, I know this is not me. Right, right. Can't be number God. <laughs> there ain't no way it could be me because this is an impossibility, right, you know. Right, right. Praise God. And, and, and that's what, and that's what we, I want you to, to understand, that the grace of God will come and it will supply whatever lacking, whatever you need in your life. Don't worry about the obstacles. Don't worry about the challenges. Don't worry about the insecurities. Don't worry about the fears. Don't worry about, don't let any of those things stop you. Amen. Go before Father. Take the word of God in the prayer. Go before Father and say, Lord, I'm afraid. Lord, I can't do it. Don't be afraid to just be naked and open before Father. And that's how, that's what he needs you to be. Broken, humble, needy, dependent, weak, abased. And he will supply the wisdom, he'll supply the strength, he'll supply everything you need. Hey, our time is up. I want to thank you for tuning in to Perfecting the Kingdom Living. And remember, you're beloved, you're blessed, you're destined to prosper, and you are more than a conqueror by the grace of God in Christ Jesus. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here from Perfecting Kingdom Living. I'm healed by the power of his word. Thank you for joining us today. We expect that you heard something that will help bring you closer to living out your kingdom purpose. If this message has been a blessing to you, please contact us and share your thoughts with us. Join us again next week for Perfecting Kingdom Living.